in the new Vedic era, whenever it may come. Won't there be an informal religiosity as such? Why not? The fundamental canons of religion emanating from the phenomena of nature will continue to exist as before. But the rituals and redundant formalities, superstitions will have to be removed. People will be taught and made aware of the essentials of religion as well as the useless aspects of the ongoing practices. Religion, in the truest sense of the term, is a guarantee for the basic needs of life, that is, food, clothing, shelter, health, education and culture, leading people to a joyful living. As a result, all men will have equal share and opportunity for all these facilities and privileges. In this way, religion too will continue undisturbed for the welfare of mankind. How long are we to continue to live in distress, short of food and the other necessities of life? As we are unemployed, with no source of income, will not this curse of unemployment come to an end? This present situation can hardly be altered or improved simply by way of providing a few jobs or permits to a few here and there. In the ancient times, Vedic scholars and rishis gave much thought to this social problem of want and unemployment. The Vedas contained the message for its solution. Even today, this sort of social problem can be solved easily if we accept and apply in our practical life those valuable Vedic directions. But I'm afraid, if anybody advocates today the way out as propounded by ancient thinkers of the Vedic times, he may run the risk of being marked as the state's enemy. A callous inertia has taken hold on people's energy for work. It cannot be possible to remove hunger by doling out cooked meals to all those who are starving. Have a close look at the social situation all around and work hard to help yourself. There will be no solution of the problem of unemployment till people remain idle and unproductive. So the fault partially lies with the people themselves. Besides, Unnecessary disputes and groupism are also responsible for these social problems. These have to be settled for the betterment of the society. Otherwise, people will have to wait till they are overtaken by tiredness and loss of energy so that the quarrel and dispute come to an end automatically. Thakur, you must be having a clear conception about the developing situation and circumstances in the present day society. Please, Thakur, enlighten us about it. I am shocked to see the fire engulfing all that is before us. It is even surpassing all tolerable limits. I admit there may be some good and honest souls in the society, even today. But the overpowering attitude is almost the same as that of the bloodsuckers. These are not at all any good signs. I am pained to see the word honesty that can be traced today only in the page of a dictionary. But you will have to search strenuously if you try to find any trace of honesty in our day-to-day -day life, either in the family or in the society at large. There is not a single area where dishonesty has not spread its fangs and wings. Indiscipline and disorder are ruling galore. In spite of these, the current of life is flowing on undeterred, you may say. This I would admit, but in fact, it has no practical value. This is just like a funeral procession that is moving on, and the beggars are collecting food grains that are being thrown by the processionists on the way. Are you to follow this kind of marching on towards the burning heart? No. We have to identify and set before our eyes a vibrant and living ideal to follow in society that some changes towards the good may take place in our society. I am sure 
that a kind of living and sustained ideal is concentrated in the great Vedas, constantly reckoning us to follow the same. Would you like to know the real situation that we live in today? You will possibly be dismayed to learn from me that all are now carrying on the load of life which is totally purposeless, as if we are merely limping ahead. Even worse, if we consider the cursed life we continue to live by boiling handfuls of food stuff on the burning pyre at the cremation ground, it's an irony of fate and pity that such degradation has overtaken us today. But whom to accuse or complain against? I have no grudge against our government or the ruling system. Rather, I would make our people themselves responsible for their own fate. In all spheres of life, we find total disorder. We have no feeling for each other, no sympathy at heart, no attitude of cooperation. No one thinks of his neighbor, as if they have no time for that. In fact, they don't feel concerned at all. All are concerned about self-interest, whatever may be in store for others. Thus, all meaningful things are facing destruction. Even valuable merchandise is being thrown away for the sake of retaining a high market price by creating artificial shortage. The same attitude is at the root of all disputes and quarrels against each other in the society today. The opportunistic self-seekers are taking advantage of the situation and making their own heyday and strengthening their own groups or sects. But these are mere petty squabbles and the ocean-like grand situation wherein these developments are of no substance or account. Wherever the sea tide remains arrested, the low-lying ponds and canals raise their level by taking advantage of the situation, as it were. This results in all kinds of trouble, inconvenience due to over-flooded lands on all sides. In our society too, now the people are disjointed. Reckless parties and troubleshooters are reigning the day. Our effort should be to wash away and remove through the high tide of the sea the heaps of accumulated rubbish and other rotten materials created by the stagnant water of the drains, canals and ponds. Likewise, if one day there is a huge upsurge of the human society, then these petty squabbles and quarrels by the unholy group combinations will be dissolved and disintegrated. Maybe the force has now been kept immobilized by raising different types of artificial guard walls and buns. Therefore, now our task is to demolish these obstructions and help in clearing the debris. There is little hope of any change for the better, unless and until that task is undertaken in right earnestness and is completed. In the days of the Vedas, none could set up hurdles and barrages to obstruct the line of progress. That's how the current of life and energy of the people could flow on at ease. If the same thing could happen today, enabling the people to utilize the elemental power for good work by overcoming the self-created hurdles, then I think there would not have been such unfortunate developments in the society. The situation today is not so stuffy that nobody can enjoy a good laugh or utter the truth in full steam that all is well for us. Almost everywhere there is restlessness, despair, lack of peace and understanding. Poor people are somehow walking ahead with huge load on their head. Life today is full of pain, struggle, complaints and frustration. However, I won't say that in any distant future, life 
will be completely free of pain and struggle and despair. These are entwined with our life because pain and grief indicate signs of creativity and new appearances. But we know that ache or pain contains in itself consolation and the hope for a better future, just as there is delivery pain for the mother at the time of the birth of her new child. Even if the pain is deep and unbearable, the delivery process nevertheless will be easier and smooth. But unfortunately, the pain and suffering give trouble to the society today has neither any remedy nor any sign of better future, as if the days of good hope and bright future are over. Unfortunately, the suffering continues. We can master strength in a spirit of forbearance to absorb the pain if there is an element of expectation of better developments in our life then it would have been a very good development for the whole society. But at present, there is no such sign of a better future, no rays of light sustaining our strength to continue the struggle. It is not that there was no pain or grief or frustration in the days of the Vedas. There used to be dissatisfaction and disputes on diverse issues among people. Of course, Whenever they would fail to develop the society in a fashion that might create joy and happiness in others, the more their pain, the more used to be their urge and determination for new efforts. But today the scene is so dark that it is not possible for people to take any progressive step to remove the pain of poverty, hunger, insecurity and the like. Naturally, the society is restless and there is no peace. The struggle is how to save one's life and in some cases to live an honorable life. In contrast, we find that in the old days their concern was the improvement of the people's social situation. They used to think and hope for better days, sweeter times, more light and more opportunities. What is our experience today? Just the opposite. Those were the days of creativity. That's why we find that there was an all-round development of the society in the days of the Vedas, be it in culture, art, literature, education, health care and social harmony. The difference is palpable and evident before our eyes today. There is no depth in people's feelings and thoughts. That's why everything appears superficial with no foundation that one can depend upon. During those glorious days of the Vedas, there used to be soldiers in almost every household ready for action. Training courses for an army career was then compulsory for each. This was done for the purpose of ensuring security and safety of the land the nation and the society from the aggressive enemies from outside. People would line up united whenever there was tension for any approaching danger. That's not to be seen today. You won't find any genuine brave soul to fight for the land. Now only the land-owning groups are ruling the roost. In the old days, Soldiers used to fight for the country's prosperity. Today we find the opposite scenario. But you see the same large strains are yet flowing through our veins. The same sun and the same moon. But alas, no more any sign of honesty, love, sympathy or any spirit of cooperation. We have been taught by the Vedas that disputes and frictions might take place eventually among the people in the society, but that will nonetheless provide new energy to arise again with renewed energy. When you have eyes to see, all opportunities will appear bright before you. In this hugely populous society, won't there be a few noble souls 
to lift and elevate the nation to a loftier level? Maybe that you won't find deposits of precious stones wherever you may dig the soil in search of it. But even if those precious materials are found in a certain remote corner, its value will still sustain and satisfy the need of all other areas of the earth. That is what the Vedas had taught us. Even in the desert land, you can get water if you dig deep enough. In the same way, men of worth will arise from among the crowd at whose command unity will be restored. Don't think it is a mere probability that I am stating for the future. The trend has already started, though we cannot see it from outside. The trend of work for the renewal of the society for its betterment is in the process and in the very near future I feel that will turn into a serious process of constructive action. That possibility is emerging from all sides. There is no doubt about it. That is our hope.